What up, AFAM? Kitty here with the Tola Visuals. Today I'm going to take you on a photo and video adventure with our latest camera to land far, far away. But first, you're going to have to help me pack. I'm going to be bringing the X-T30 today. This is Fuji's latest APS-C sensor. Look at how small and compact and travel friendly this thing is. It also has a relatively high megapixel count at 26.1, shoots up to 4K and 120 frames in HD. That's pretty mind blowing. I'm going to be bringing four of these Fuji batteries because that's how many it'll take to shoot on it all day with photo and video. I love shooting on Fuji for my B-roll, my behind the scenes, and also my Instagram photos because I just love the colors. It looks so flawless and elegant. It makes my skin look good too. I'm going to be bringing other travel friendly gear like this Weeble Lab Gimbal because the X-T30 does not have image stabilization unlike the X-H1 which we are shooting on right now. But I do love that it has the same sensor as its more expensive X-T3 here, although this does shoot 4K60, has dual card slots, and has a bigger body because she eats pretty well. The X-T30 is a nice step up from the X-T20, which is a camera I definitely love. Check out that review up here. The lenses we'll be bringing include a 56-1.2, a 16 to 2.8, as well as a zoom, which is a 16 to 55 millimeter. But I gotta pack up right now and hurry up because we're gonna catch a flight. So here's my flight. It wouldn't be a real vlog without riding an electric something something. Fuji's autofocus continuous is getting better and better, even with their face detect. Now I'm gonna be shooting all my test footage in autofocus, which really scares me because I usually shoot on manual focus. For you video nerds out there, just know that it does shoot 10-bit 422 with an external recorder, which is just insanity with this budget-friendly camera. I'm gonna be shooting on my beloved Eterna film simulation, but it does shoot on F-Log. Fuji photos and video, I think, are a lot easier to color grade than Sony footage. There's just a brilliance of Fuji color science that they just have. And if you want flawless skin, Fuji is your best friend. Not only are the colors really good with their image quality, but the X-T30 does have three different colors, black, vintagey silver, and a charcoal silver. Now let's head to the Golden Gate Bridge. clothes because obviously if you shoot on Instagram in your new location you want to match the background. So I got this fancy little tutu outfit but right now we're going to take a break and eat some ice cream and I'm going to show you how to transfer your photos from your camera into your phone so you can post it on Instagram. Super easy. First turn on the camera then use the Fuji camera remote app. Let it load up. Might take a second and then when the screen comes on click the import image button. Now we wait, it's connecting. I haven't gotten videos to transfer from the camera into the phone, unfortunately, and make sure you're shooting in JPEGs because RAW won't transfer over. Now that it's all loaded up, you'll see all the pictures and thumbnails on your phone. All you gotta do is pick the ones you want and then select import. I'm on Android, so what Google will do is make an album called Camera Remote where all the photos will import into there. And then you can just edit it in Lightroom, Disco, and then post it on Instagram, and you're good to go. 
No computer workflow needed. I like this one. Ooh. Another thing you could use with the app is to monitor if you're shooting yourself on video. You could change the aperture, shutter, ISO. However, I heard it doesn't work in 4K. So if you want to shoot in 1080, it works perfectly. No flip out screen, but you got a phone. I really love how the X-T30 is a great photography camera. However, I do really, really wish that Fuji would work out in the video department as well. On paper, this camera is really good for video-wise, but there's some things that I wish it had. For instance, there's a microphone input. However, it's a 2.5 a millimeter input, which means you have to get an adapter. And this is something I didn't even have, so I had to get this separately just to be able to use this. Look at how ugly this thing is. Why? At least it has a mic input though. And then you can't use the USB port, which they say you could use it to charge the camera because it doesn't come with a charger and also connect it with headphones so you can monitor audio. However, we did test with my USB-C headphones as well as the adapter with like regular aux cable inputs and neither of them worked, which is so strange. Unlike the X-T3 and the X-H1, I do miss, especially for Instagrams, that portrait tilt screen so when we do a lot of low angles which we actually do well you can't really see the screen unless you're bending over like this i love how compact and small this is but for some of you this might be too tiny the ergonomics on this is kind of awkward and some people hit this q button quite often because it's just near your thumb there but they did allow a little bit more real estate space for your thumb unlike the xt20 another thing that it has like the xt20 is this thread screw which is all the way to the right which means you have to get a hand grip to be able to have the screw in the middle which the xt3 and the xh1 don't have a problem with another issue with this screw being off centered Sometimes it's hard to frame up the camera because now you're not centered with the lens. Another reason to get the hand grip is because when you use these longer Manfrotto type quick plates and you have a wider lens, it hits it. That's irritating. So I can't switch out lenses to a smaller one to a bigger one without taking off the quick plate first. Another problem with that is when you have a quick plate on here, you can't access the battery door, which is pretty annoying. So you'd have to take off the quick plate just to change the battery. Yeah, and these batteries last probably like an hour and a half, two hours, depending on how you use it and if you shoot video and photography, which is something we're doing. We're also shooting right now in like 87 to 90 degree heat, and we just got an overheating warning. And we've only been shooting for like three hours. So that's something to take note, that this thing does overheat depending on what temperature you're shooting in. With the X-H1, which we're shooting on right now, it had no issues. Another thing I wish they changed for video-wise, if you shoot it in 4K, you can only shoot for 10 minutes. There's a recording limit. And then for 1080, you only get 15. So that's a bummer. If you're shooting in shorter clip bursts, then it's not a problem. But if that's also an issue for you, definitely get the X-T3 because it's 20 minute record limit for 4K, 60, and then 30 minutes for the other formats. But this is for video people. It has a lot of great features for video. However, for the photography side, this thing is a gem. It's amazing. I love it just as much as I love the X-T20. So if you're more a photographer, maybe just traveling and want a lighter lens and body setup, this is definitely for you. And it has a lot of the features that the X-T3 has as well, but for $600 cheaper. So that's something to note.
taking a little relaxer here because that was an adventure. Now the X-T30 is definitely a step up from my beloved X-T20. It was really good photography and video camera. I'm really excited that Fuji is putting more video features into their budget-friendly cameras like this one. However, there are limitations if you're gonna be focusing more on video. I really love Fuji's image quality and color science. However, if you're looking to save 600 bucks, this is the camera to get. But if you wanna go with the X-T3, there's definitely benefits like 4K60, longer recording, Board times, dual card slots, a more professional ergonomic body, weather sealing, just a little bit more upgradable than this camera. But this is really great if you want to take this anywhere and not have to worry about it being a burden because it's so lightweight, the body, the lenses, you can carry this anywhere. This camera is perfect for travel, shorter video clips, definitely photography. Fuji is really outstanding when it comes to portraits, landscapes, just the colors that make everything look so flawless and beautiful and it kind of gives you this like film vintage vibe that just makes it so magical. And I really love working with all the mechanical dials and buttons like aperture, shutter, and just the body build itself isn't made very plasticky, which is something I really like. Also, there's three different colors for the X-T30. There's this black one, a charcoal silver one, and then also like a vintage -y silver. Is Fuji video gonna go away? I don't think so. I think it's just gonna get better and better and, and it gets me excited for what's to come in the future, especially because there's so much packed into this little guy for how much it really is. But for me, I think I'm gonna go with another Fuji camera over the X-T30, but if this is something that fits you and your lifestyle and your budget, then this is definitely a good choice. Thanks for hanging out with me. Find me on IG because I post there on the daily. Maybe there'll be some Fuji photos as well. You do you fam, and I'll see you when I see you. It's done.